water. Beautiful substance that a lot of people take for granted, right? A lot of people don't think about it, but water has to come from somewhere. Now, a lot of people watching this obviously have been watching our Lake Mead updates and everything to do with the water here in the Southwest lately, but uh, there's been a lot that has happened at the lake recently, and we're gonna sit down, talk about it kind of in a style, you know, that we haven't filmed a whole lot of videos in here at the house, nice and easy. A lot of people have been tagging me in a bunch of different stuff that's been happening at Lake Mead lately, and uh, we're just gonna go ahead and cover it. I mentioned in our video where we filmed the World War II Higgins boat. I mentioned that I love history and a lot of people were actually showing support saying that you guys also love history. So at the very end of this video, I'm going to put a link to another video I filmed in the past that is just really neat and I thought that you guys might enjoy it. I went to a museum up here in northern Nevada called the Williams Family Museum. Shows a ton of history, a lot of cool facts, and just a lot of cool stuff to see that maybe you guys have never known about. So once again, Link will be at the very end of this video. Make sure to watch this one through. There might be something unique in this one that you might find interesting, but at the end, just another one of our videos you guys can watch. Hopefully the audio is good. All right, it's hot out here. It's a little change of scenery. We're actually sitting in the backyard for this video, but we're chilling outside right now. So if there's a little bit of wind messing up the audio or something, it's a little bit windy, but uh, we got a whole list of stuff we want to kind of talk about. A lot of people have been interested still at the topic surrounding Lake Mead. On my Instagram, I've been getting blown up with people tagging me in Lake Mead content and surprisingly Crocs too. You guys like the fact that Senior wears Crocs everywhere we go. But And then at the end of this video, we're actually gonna do some fishing. From the last time we went out of Lake Mead, fishing was incredible. So make sure to watch to the end if that's something you're interested in watching. But So one of the first <clears throat> things we wanted to talk about that's absolutely crazy, a lot of outdoorsmen have posted about it, is the fact that somebody literally found a bighorn sheep stuck in the mud at Lake Mead good news I'm not the only one that's gotten stuck in the in the mud so they did a pretty amazing job by getting that bighorn sheep out they saved its life and everything is good it was actually raining the day before so it made a lot more of the ground muddy something else before we get into it is uh, the dam there was a fire at the dam it, it was an explosion actually over at the dam and uh, my DMs were blowing up like people were texting us like get down there and everything so Adrian jumps in the truck he he hauls butt down there all right we got something crazy right now so literally this morning tons and tons of people on instagram facebook youtube everywhere have been commenting and tagging me and stuff supposedly a part of the hoover dam literally just exploded and busted out into a big flaming ball of fire so we're gonna walk up there really quick check it out and see how bad it is see if it's actually burning up like crazy or if they already put that flame out all right, we're almost, we're almost there, Gigi. Finally, man, I feel like I've been walking for 10 years already. You know those dang stairs, it's like 200 stair steps. My dang workout in for today. Jeez, look at <laughs> it, just look how dang far this. We had to walk all the way up those stairs in 115 degree weather. You're almost there though, Gigi. Almost there, almost there. <laughs> On the right side down there, you can see the firefighters spraying water. They're already putting it out. It takes about, I don't know, 40 minutes to get to the dam from my house. But from what I've heard is it was a transformer that caught on fire. It was an electrical fire. It wasn't very big and it got put out pretty quick. And according to what I've seen, they're saying uh, don't expect, you know, any power loss from it or anything like that. Because I was reading the comments. A lot of people thought that it was something a lot more significant than what I heard it was. So nothing significant came of it. But it still is a little bit weird, you know, the timing of everything, of it just sparking off. But Yeah, it was kind of weird because Channel 5 News did, did a little article on us. Right after it posted on the news, people started writing like, the dam's on fire. So uh, some of this stuff we're covering, I know it's already hit breaking news and it's all over national news and everything, but we're just doing it to update our viewers, which are you guys and our subscribers. I can care less about if it was on the national news or whatever. We're just talking about what we're seeing around here. I don't care who's first to it or whatever. We're just talking about it, updating you guys. And then later on, like we said, we're gonna add all the fishing stuff from our last trip that we did. Mm -hmm. So there's another thing that recently hit national news and a lot of people have been saying I should mention it in one of the videos. So NASA recently came out with satellite footage that shows obviously from the satellite imagery of what Lake Mead looked like over the last 20 years. We're going to show the pictures here. This is what the water level looked like in 2000. 
here's what the water level looks like right now and uh, that's pretty neat to see honestly a lot of people have already filmed that a lot of people have talked about it and it's hit national news but I thought it'd be cool to show you guys really quick here because maybe somebody hasn't seen it as people um, become more aware of all these water issues I would expect to see a lot of things tightening up with the water Vegas recently within the last couple days already voted that no house will have a bigger pool built than 600 square feet and this just came down like two days ago my pool right here is probably pushing that so it's not very it's not a very big pool and uh, these million dollar homes that are going up you know they, they want these just massive pools not gonna happen anymore they, they just pass that and houses will not be built with huge pools anymore as far as the water levels go you know they're still obviously not looking bright now I don't want to sit here and lie that it's not something to be nervous about in our last video where we sat down and we talked about it we we're talking about how it's important to prepare than to under prepare you know someone might say oh you're crazy for saving water you're crazy for saving food you're crazy for this or that but if that day ever does come around obviously you know it's better to be the one who was ready than the one who wasn't there there's other youtube channels out there and some people that just terrify people i watch them and i get scared and if i'm getting scared then there's a problem because you know i've, I've seen a bunch of different stuff in different countries and all that and the way other channels are making it seem is everything's gonna hit the fan and just it's over i mean everything is absolutely over and i don't think we're anywhere near there when it comes to conspiracy theories i'll listen to them you know what i mean i, I won't put my opinion on here because it's not my job to give you an opinion just sort the information out common sense will, will lead you in the right direction i don't have to tell you so these conspiracy theories some of them might be you know a little bit of truth so you have to go through history the reason why we're history people is because you study history and you say could this happen again so if you look at the city of la millions of people in that city in 1904 la actually was running out of water they had about 50,000 people there they were running out of water so they thought what are we going to do so they actually went up to owens valley there was a lake called owens lake which is actually near my hometown where i grew up ridgecrest california out there in the middle of the desert but in order to tap into it they had to make it look like la was completely out of water and i'm not making this up you can look it up they scared everybody half to death they received the funding and then they built the california aqueduct that went from that lake all the way to la and they began draining owens lake so Owens Lake now, what it looks like, <laughs> the whole lake is about a foot deep. They drained it completely. I mean, absolutely massive lake, completely gone. There was tourists there and everything. That lake is gone. It's dust. It got, it got so dusty out there that the windstorms were creating this dust that were getting people sick that they had to start wetting it down. So if you go out there nowadays, there's sprinklers that just wet down all this dust where this massive lake was. So has it happened in the past? Yes, will it happen again? We don't know. Is it happening now? We don't know, but it has happened in the past. So conspiracy theories sometimes have a little bit of backbone to them, sometimes they don't. And uh, take the information in and do what you have to do for you. If you wanna prepare, do it. If you think it's a hoax, if you think it's all fake, then don't do anything. Like I've said before in the comment section down below, there's a, a massive conversation going on with people talking about what might be happening, their opinions on things. And uh, you can literally go down there and read about a hundred different opinions on what people believe is going on with this whole situation. But it's important that even if it is a conspiracy theory, to go ahead and digest the information, you know, think about it, look at it for yourself and really form your own opinion on it. Yeah, and I always go back to us being spoiled here in the United States. I've been to a lot of countries where there's a lot of horrible things that happen. And uh, for example, Ukraine, it's operating like normal. Um, people are coming in and saying, you know, Russia might attack, Russia might attack and, and start preparing. There was people that completely blew it off. There was people that prepared, got out of town. They believed it and everything. And what ended up happening? Ukraine is pretty much leveled, so. So uh, in situations like that, you start hearing whispers of things. You might want to take them serious. Um, like I said, a lot of horrible things happen in, in this world as Americans. 
we're comfortable we sit here you know we have running water um, we have police we have everything and, and a lot of you guys that are from the United States you just haven't you haven't left you haven't seen anything you haven't seen that entire cities can can be destroyed down to rubble in no time you know what I mean I've been in war-torn countries where people are hungry where they're starving where they're fighting they're killing each other because of religion I mean the city one city here and five miles down the road there's another city and because of a religion they will kill each other on sight so you have places like that so so me knowing that these places exist I'm a little bit more paranoid than the average person and I understand that the world isn't just you know sunshine and rainbows so that's why I give you a little bit of information on this stuff and absorb it use your common sense sort it out do what you have to do I don't want to draw this out too long we're gonna to get to the fishing portion but uh, yeah that's that's pretty much where we're at right now we got a hook up in the intro guys right when we started so we're out here at Lake Mead right now the fish are boiling yet again we already made a video out here chasing the boils before which was an absolute blast and we're out here doing it again we got Juju with us literally right when I started up filming he hooks up so we are over an absolutely massive, massive school of fish right now. I got my live scope down and I could just see fish left and right. It was raining earlier today. It's super humid, super hot, but the fish are biting and they're biting really good. So we're going to break down a little bit of the stuff we're fishing with, the techniques we're using and how we found these fish. All right, so we're out here. I'm out here with my boys. It's a beautiful day. It's cloudy. Barometric pressure dropped today, which if you know fishing, you know when the barometric pressure drops the fish just start moving like crazy. We're gonna have some fun, we're gonna catch some fish. A lot of the guys, they think it's unbelievable that we're able to catch fish so easy. For those of you who might not know exactly what a boil is, because we've been fishing them out here for a couple videos now, and I wanna kind of explain exactly what a boil is. And this is what it looks like on the sonar from underwater. So if I, I didn't bring them with me, but if I would've brought some big deep water spoons and everything, I would be catching probably 100 fish right now. I could probably sit here over this school and like I said, probably seriously catch a hundred fish. Oh, he got oh, one. Oh. He got one. <laughs> so as he's rolling one in the background, I don't want to miss this opportunity on the graph. Let me see if I can pause it. Pause. What are you saying though? No. This is on top water, so I'm imagine getting down there where they all are at. Nice little guy. All right, so this right here, this is a big ball of shad. And all of those little lines are a bunch of stripers. If you've watched like the National Geographic shows and stuff and you look in the oceans when there's those big schools of sardines and anchovies or whatever they're filming at the time, they all get pushed up and the birds are attacking them and the, you know, the dolphins come out of nowhere and all those fish are out there eating them. It's exactly what happens in this lake, believe it or not. So imagine that this ball of shad gets pushed up to the surface and this big school of stripers goes up and they're chasing them just like you see on TV. Well, that's what we're fishing right now. Every time they come up to the surface, they start jumping like crazy. Like they're even jumping right there. Okay, Look at that. See that? Watch this. Look at, yep, boil watch straight ahead. This. And I'm just gonna act like it's an injured fish. So they're jumping, they're attacking these fish. Sometimes they injure them and those little shad are hurt and they do erratic movements like what I'm trying to do with my bait. And that's how you don't catch them. <laughs> Every single fishing scenario has got a different mentality you got to look at it and a different lure you got to use. I'll go ahead and try to break down my mentality. I want to give a piece of advice to anybody watching this too that wants to come out and catch fish with boils, anything that imitates shad. Juju was fishing a topwater bait. I got a jerk bait going on right here. And these are both baits that if you go out and you're out here and you happen to see a boil, these will work. This is the same rod I cut that pike with not too long ago, but you cast out a jerk bait. What I like to do is I keep my line slacked and you give it a couple pops. Then you let it sit for a second or two, give it a couple pops. If you notice my line as it's slack, you can see that snap in my line. That's how you know your bait's working right. So there's two different ways you can fish your jerk bait. You could give it a real erratic action with those snaps like that. Change it up one pop, three pops, five pops, whatever, and pause. And another way you could do it, a slight pull and then a little pop. Slight pull, pop. But one thing about a jerk bait, the reason why I love fishing them top water anything shad imitating that these things will eat but a jerk bait it's gonna look oh they're jumping over there but it's gonna look like a fish is dying it's gonna look like a fish is dying so it goes real erratic and it pauses real erratic pauses same thing with the top water bait so anything that gets real erratic and pauses on that pause you'll get a bite almost every time all right juju 
with the fish boiling so good, here's the deal. Hundred dollars to the first person to catch three. Hundred? For yeah, three? So I'm, I'm gonna give you a head start too. I'll let you catch two and then I'll start now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna put myself at a little disadvantage. You got that top water tied on? I'm gonna fish a little tailspin, okay? Through the mm -hmm. boil. So yeah. we're gonna see who can catch one first. The person fishing deep or top water. You get it? It's a hundred dollars. This is actually the pan optics live scope right here that I'm looking at on my sonar. Now, I don't necessarily need this for this fishing scenario, but I still like to look at it because it's cool to see. Now, all these little dots you're seeing right here are all stripers. So there's an entire school of stripers 100% below me live right now. Live scope. That was seriously his thing. First drop he was showing me right now on it and then he drops it. So you can see your bait on the live scope? Yep. Oh, wait, just go, ahead, go ahead and do it again. And I'm going to show the viewers what your bait looks like going down to all these fish. I've never even seen that bait. All right, so right here. hope they can see it. Can all see those it are stripers right there. Yeah, so I'm going to go back. And I'm gonna go here? to. Can you see my bait sinking? I'm gonna go to Pan Optics. See my bait sinking right there? Look at this, guys. There's my bait. There's it just bait. sank. You could see it sinking right there. Oh man, it just went through a whole school. They're chasing it. They're chasing it. So look at. Oh, they all went down towards it. They're all right there following my bait. I'm gonna let it sink deeper into the school. Yeah, that's his bait dropping right there. There's a few of them chasing it down. You got, got him. You got, got him. One. Yep, got him. All right, put him right in front of the camera so I can see. There it is. There's the one he's reeling up. He got lucky. I gave you that two fish advantage. Oh, it's a I nice one too. Oh man, I picked man, up. That one needs to miss. I picked up the camera to help him out, so he has straight below us. <laughs> oh Dang. man, Juju, you better get busy. Adrian caught two. Now it's two to two. I will say, I think I'm cheating a little bit because I'm using the live scope and I can see him down there when I'm catching him and he's trying to use top water. That's so. alright, he's about to get you. So Juju caught two, Adrian gave him a little head start. Now he just hooked up on two, he's cheating using the live scope. Juju's using top water. I'm going to take you over there by where they're splashing around Juju so you can get it before he gets in the water. $100. Oh here Juju, there it is. They were jumping right there. I'm zooming in. Zooming in. Make it happen. Finish him. Oh, he got it. It came up and took it. If I can land one, if I can land got one before it. him, it's over. <laughs> Let's see if I can catch him. Hurry up, Adrian. Hurry up. Drop it and you might catch one before him. I don't land this one. Look at them boiling down there like crazy. You're about to lose $100. Who get cares about out, over there? Oh, no. Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> got it. Dang. All right, well. Juju wins. That's money. You gave me the two fish start, but dang. he was catching fish before me the whole time we we're filming, so he did catch three fish just still almost caught up on me. Juju, you're a good fisherman, all right? I'm a man of my word. It was top water versus jig, and I almost caught him at the end there. He had a two fish head start on me, and it was two to two. Both fishing at the same time, and he got lucky. He caught a third one. So they're still, I mean, that dude over there is catching them. They're boiling everywhere. Where's fish are all over us. This is one heck of a time right now. Juju's having a hard time on hooking that fish, but once he does, hundred dollars. It's the game winner. That fish is worth a hundred dollars. Fake, <laughs> nice. <laughs> there we go, hundred dollars. Nice try. Nice <laughs> fish. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, next time we're gonna put a weight limit on the fish, okay? Yeah, next time we gotta do biggest <laughs> fish out of three wins. Sounds like a plan. Yep. Whoever catches the next fish, Jew, between me and you, double or nothing. What do you think about that? I like my eyes. I like my eyes. I'm gonna All right, he's gonna. You better do get it. up there and he's catch one. Do it. All right, I'm going to the front then. Get your bait ready. I'm gonna teach you why gambling is bad. All right. Yeah. Hundred dollars, double or nothing. You give me that hundred, or I give you another hundred. Right. Looks like I'm making two hundred today. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's do it. Oh, he gets a head start. Let's go. We're gonna start with the fast motion. Man, look at that boil down there. Dang. Oh shoot. Look at that boil. No, no, man. Oh my goodness, Juju. It's gonna come down to who gets the first cast in the boil. So so Juju he, he decided that he wanted to go double or nothing, so. They're right here. Let's Maybe see who can do it. It's whoever gets the first fish in the Ooh, He oh, got one. Oh he oh, lost oh, it. <laughs> Oh, got him back, got him back. 
Oh, oh no, right there to the left was jumping. <laughs> oh, my oh man, it's not meant to be. You gotta cast that in the boil, dude. Got him, got him, uh, got him, got him. Oh, that's the one. Oh, Juju. These little hooks are horrible. Oh man, zoom in on his. He'd, oh, this one's a big one. Oh, double hook up. <laughs> oh, this one's pretty big. Double hook up. <laughs> this one's uh oh. Big. Down to who can get it first. Oh, he lost, lost it. Loser. He oh, almost God. had a chance. Oh, my it wasn't meant to be. I snapped my line. It snapped? Oh, I did. Hundred dollars. Dang. I, I messed up his line before. You tied that <laughs> knot, didn't you? Sabotage. <laughs> Sabotage. Oh, actually, I didn't tie that one. He tied that lure on for you. Dang. Sorry, dude. That's the fastest I ever made a hundred and lost a hundred. <laughs> Ooh. I call let me sabotage. See those, let me see those pliers. I think we need a rematch. No. <laughs> no, it's all good. It's the name of the game. And that was the hundred dollar fish. Thank you, sir. <laughs> and uh just know everybody that lives in Vegas, just know you can't beat the house. And uh Juju's a visitor. He came to gamble here. You can't beat the house, boy. Damn. I guess you got <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have to run it back with him. I call a rematch. Triple man. <laughs> Can't beat the house. That's that's yeah. the name of the game. Once you learn that, you realize wasting your money. It was all for fun and games with the family. We like putting a little incentive out there to fish boils. It makes it a lot more fun when you guys are kind of having a little friendly competition. We threw some money into it, but like we said, it's all fun and games at the end of the day. Fun little competition. Next time, we're all going after you. I gave right. Juju a little head start. He got me good, yep. which was still fun. Then Senior wanted to challenge him to a double or nothing, and he ended up with a hundred dollar bill at the end of the day. So that hundred, next time we come out, we're competing for it again. Sounds good. Is a bird in the hand more valuable than three in the bush? So, that. <laughs> I've never even heard that one, but that's a Julian's good one. Like, You're, what the heck? You never Sorry. heard that one? <laughs> nah, I said it took my dang money though. But like we said, all fun and games. Having a great time out here fishing. We're done fishing for a little bit now. The fish are still biting like crazy, but we got another video we got to film. Uh, we were actually like filming a water level update, but geez, it is extremely humid because it rained. I feel like I'm in like Florida or something with how just wet the air feels, but. We showed you multiple different techniques to catching fish out here. It's super easy when you're seeing them boiling. I hope you guys, if you come out here, you try this, you catch a bunch, but I thank you guys for watching and I'll see you outdoors.